We're sitting down now with Lynn Goldstein, an artist from Lorton. Uh, Fairfax Station. Yes. <laughs> but your your studio is in Lorton. Yes, the it is. Lorton Art House used uh, to be Workhouse Art Center. Workhouse Art Center. Yes. Used to be a prison. Yes. And now it's the exact opposite. I would call that pretty much the opposite. And when it got built, did you start your studio right away? Uh, we opened in 2008. The buildings themselves are historical, and they were built around the turn of the last century. Uh, and it was, it was originally intended as a workhouse so that there were not hardened criminals there. And as time progressed, it got more and more, um, how shall I put it, unpleasant there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it closed in 1997. And then we opened in 2008, the fall of 2008, and I actually moved in at that time as well. Okay, I think it's amazing what they did over there. It is amazing it's what so they've beautiful, done. It's so beautiful, and I love spending time there. And it's one of the few places I feel like around here that you can see all the art. There aren't a lot of places like that anymore around here in Northern Virginia. In Northern Virginia, I think you're right. And it is a wonderful place. I have made a number of friends as a result of being there, and my work has actually changed as a result of being there as well. So what I'm starting today is a painting that is going to be of the uh, Gardon River in southern France. And it's going to be an acrylic piece when it's finished. It's uh, 20 by 16 inches. And this is uh, what I refer to as the ugly stage. But what I do when I do this is I tend to just kind of throw paint, um, but I'm paying close attention to the darks and lights and the middle values so that when I start painting over that, the end result will end up looking um, a lot like this. The most important piece to me is this one. This is called Treatise, and it was made to commemorate the Holocaust. I realized that I wanted to use books because the Jewish people are called the people of the book and also because education has always been important in Jewish tradition. But also I wanted to use books that were foreign language texts. So I have uh, German, Polish, Italian, French, Russian, and one Yiddish book in the piece. And the reason that I'm using those, everything's symbolic in this, this piece, which is one of the reasons why I'm proud of it, because I came up with symbolism where otherwise I, you wouldn't have thought that it would exist. So each book is foreign language, and each book is distressed on the interior. This book was shot with a gun, and it was an Austrian Luger and with full metal jackets, so it is relatively authentic. And what's interesting is people can take these books and they can take them down and look at them and see what's going on in the books. And um, in this case, you can see the exit hole of the bullet. Um, and then I have photographs uh, from people who were affected by the Holocaust inside the books and they're distressed in one way or another. And then they're included in the books. This, uh, ironically, is also shot. And then the uh, stool the pitcher and the bowl and the um, little cloth here, those are all symbolic as well. Uh, when you go to a Jewish funeral, if you go to the cemetery, you don't go back into the home of the bereaved without washing your hands first with water. So often if you go to a funeral that, from someone who was Jewish and go back to the family's home, you will find a pitcher outside their door and you rinse your hands off with water before you go into the home. This one was singed, so you can see that it's burned on the edges. This book is in Polish. I also wanted to keep the covers intact because very often when we're injured emotionally or physically, people can't see that. But if you scratch, scratch the surface, then you do see the damage that has been done and you find out that people have been injured in ways that aren't visible at first glance. I also wanted to use a tree because in Jewish tradition, uh, and as in a lot of religious traditions, trees figure prominently. But a tree in the Jewish tradition uh, also signifies the tree of life, which is the Torah, which is the five books of Moses. Uh, I also 
wanted to show that the book was fractured, so, uh, I, the tree was fractured. So you see all of the books together and it makes up one tree, but it's fractured, which is what happened to people during World War II. But I did want to have a little bit of hope because I tend to be a positive person with a positive outlook. So this is the Yiddish book, and on this book it has the one touch of color, the green, and it also has a sapling to indicate that there is some hope that is going to hopefully come from this experience. You teach and you, do you sell your art? Yes, I do. Um, I have my work represented in galleries, um, not just at the workhouse, but I show my work there as well and I do teach at the work workhouse. I taught for Fairfax County in the adult and community education department for seven, uh, 17 years, about 17 years. And um, when the workhouse opened, I started teaching there as well. And then as time progressed, I decided I was not going to teach through the county anymore and just concentrate on teaching at the workhouse. But I've also taught workshops locally as well as internationally. In October this past year, I was in southern France teaching a workshop. Pastels are your specialty, right? Pastel is my medium of choice, and it has been for many years. I, when I was in school, I studied art, so I had to do the full complement of media. So I did um, printmaking, photography, um, sculpture, ceramics, painting and at that time I painted in oil and then when I got out of school I was a graphic designer and I did that for many years but I was painting at the same time and I started working in pastel uh, about 25 years ago and I've been doing it ever since and recently I have moved from just doing pastel to doing installation work and also um, work in acrylic. You said when you started at school, what school did you go to? West Virginia University. And that's where you're actually from? Yes. You're not from the Northern Virginia area? No. But in West Virginia, you said it was a good place to be raised in, right? It was. It w it, well, I was in a smaller town. It was not, I did not live alone on a mountaintop with my family. A mm -hmm. lot of people will think that type of thing when you say you're from West Virginia. But I did live in a home where uh, our house backed up to the mountains. So wow. I would see the mountains every single day. And at the end of the street where I grew up, there was a vacant lot. And I would go up there and sit under the trees and look out at the mountains. And so it's not really surprising that I became a landscape painter. Of course. It's right there every day. Absolutely. And what age did you start your landscape painting? Oh, gosh. I initially thought that I was going to do portraiture because I'm a people person. I'm actually an extreme extrovert. So I, I thought that I would really want to concentrate on people. So I ended up studying portraiture for several years and also worked from the model a lot for many years. And then I realized if I was getting out of graphics that I really didn't want to go into another area where people would be constantly telling me, there's something wrong here. Mm -hmm. You need to change this hair. Mm -hmm. So uh, landscape really was the subject that fed my soul. So that's the direction that I decided to take. There's so many different types of art in, yes. the, in the workhouse. Yes. And have you started any new types of art that you've never done before as a result of being around the different artists? Well, honestly, the um, piece that I did to commemorate the Holocaust was inspired as a result of knowing other people at the workhouse not because they do work like that, but because when you're around other artists, there's this synergy that happens, and you're looking at what they're doing, and it doesn't, it's, it's not that you are going out to copy what they're doing, but what they do gets into your mind, and you start thinking of other ways to work. It's almost impossible to ignore, right? It isn't, it's not possible to, you know, to ignore that, it isn't. When you are painting, and I've always been so impressed by people that can make something so beautiful out of nothing, but when you paint, do your emotions affect how your art looks? I think so, yes. Uh, when I mentioned that I did the, the pieces looking up into the trees from below, and they were uh, inspired by the death of a friend of mine, 
a lot of people look at those paintings and they really like them. They, there's something uh, probably childlike about it because that's when we lie down on the ground and we look up into the trees mm -hmm. when we're children. But I had one piece in particular that I had done and a woman came into my studio and she looked at that painting and she just kept looking at it and she ended up um, saying, my husband died in January and this makes me feel better when I look at it. So she wow. got it. There, she got it. Exactly what you, it, the it, reason you painted it. For. Right. And so, you know, I think that my emotions did go into that, and she somehow sensed it. That's not always what happens, but when it does, it's, it's magic. That is amazing, though. That's what you were conveying, yeah. and that's what she got. And art is always interpretive, of course, but Absolutely. that was with a purpose. Yep. Wow. I'm actually blown away by that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you said you had a website and a blog. Yes. What's your website called? It's very simple, lynngoldstein.com. Simple enough. Thank you so much for You're being welcome. here with us today. High Thank five. you.